Welcome everybody. It is time for Gadget Talk, the monthly creative cash show brought to you by the Geocache Talk Network. If you're watching live, you can be part of the adventure tonight. Please join us in the chat room and participate with others as they watch the show. The link to the chat room is also on the geocachetalk.com front page. If you're listening later, please give it a like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. And I want to first off get to, you know, if you want to become a patron, the link is on the front of the Geocache Talk website, or go ahead over to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk for more details. Patrons get the famous blackout coin and other geocaching items during the year as well as bonus content and invite invites to special events only for patrons. Supports levels start as little as the bison tube level, which is $3 a month. And now I'd like to welcome our gadget talk host, Chad Champion, AKA bounce bounce. Thanks, Derek. I appreciate it. I want to welcome everybody to the June 30th cash build, which is going to be a nine button puzzle. I'm Look, really looking you. forward to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So am I. Um, it's going to, it's actually maybe a little bit longer of a uh, build today, but we'll see. We'll go as quick as we can. But before we get to that, do you want to mention the uh, sponsors, please? Yep. We got our sponsors. Our first sponsor tonight is Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made up of genuine right in the rain paper. The logbooks designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who would rather go caching than doing cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. And also, we mentioned this is the last night to get the right in the rain, all weather writing paper perfect for your physical geocaches, large or small promo. And it's a 30% off promo code, and you have to use geocache is your the code for that. And they are also sponsoring tonight. And once again, this is June 30th. And this is the last night that you can get the uh, 30% off on that uh, on Right in the Rain. And remember, use the promo code geocache. And you can find them at rightintherain.com. And I we did that test a couple weeks ago on how that uh, Right in the Rain paper worked. And I just thought that was really amazing. And that you left it in, in the water for over a week and it still wrote on there perfectly and not smeared or anything. That was just really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it, it worked great. One thing um, that was brought up in the chat from that, actually, I remember is uh, they asked about the gel pins. And so anything water based won't write, won't stick to right in the rain. That's okay. why you, when you get the 8x11 the eight sheets, you can't print it on an ink jet. You got to print it on a, a laser jet. But right. also our log works, uh, our, our main sponsor, they, their paper is also right in the rain. So they actually right. use the brand right in the rain paper for their logs. So Right. And the other thing great. I've noticed with right in the rain paper, a lot of times the stamps don't work really well on them as well, unless you let it dry a little bit longer. But if you probably water stamp based. It, yeah. And if you stamp and you wipe it real quick, it's just going to write right off or smear yeah. right off. So, all right. I'm so looking forward to this build, and it's, since it's going to take us a while to get through it, why don't we go ahead and get started, Chad? Yes. Um, so, uh, first thing we'll start with is uh, our buttons. Let's get our buttons put, put together here. So, let's go ahead and put up that the build cam. Okay, build cam's up. And so, hopefully everybody bought these buttons here and bought two packs of them because there's only six per pack. Yeah, actually, when I ordered mine, I think mine had nine. Uh, oh, really? Well, you got some bonuses. So yeah, I was trying evidently. to find 10 packs. They typically, I used to always find them in a 10 pack. And when I was looking to put these on there, no one had them in a 10 back pack but the square buttons. But the square buttons are a difficult button to to use. So or make a hole for. Right. So let's go ahead and open up our pack here of buttons. Okay. And as you can see, there's all kinds of parts here. Yeah, it took so me a little thing, bit to figure out how to put those together. The first time. Yeah, look at that. We'll go over it here. So first thing, these things here, you can take these and put them aside. That's for that's just a regular on-off switch. Uh, okay. Momentary uh, switch. So we want to get rid of those, and that's why we ordered the other ones with it. It's a microwave switch, or has the normally open, normally closed switch on it. So we got okay. rid of those. Um. And we will open up our momentary sw or our switches here. Normally, normally closed switches okay. that we've ordered separately. 
so the the original buttons those are just you're, we're just getting those for the shell but the the new switches the microwave switches are the same size as the momentary switches correct yes they're made for the exact same thing same buttons um but as you can see they have two leads here okay. so this one here is just this is normally open and then you close it when you activate the switch this has the option for normally open and normally closed which i don't know if you can yep, see I the can, NC. I, can, I can see the two leads right yeah well there's an nc it's written on it really hard to see i don't have my light on on my build cam uh but anyway so it says normally open normally closed on there so um anyway so we'll get rid of these uh now you could use those for a different project uh if you want so you don't have to throw them away but right, i couldn't find any come of these. up with the build for those oh absolutely you can use those for all kinds of things um and then we are going to assemble these on here so we'll take our new switch okay and you can see there's two stubs here on on this that match the holes on here so we're going to go ahead and just mount them I'm trying to get which one i did first last time i do the small one here and then i slide it up in and you got to bend that plastic back and pop it in right oh, you know what i'm doing it upside down and just gotta be careful about bending that plastic because it you don't want to snap it off right it's pretty fle flexible but and then make sure that you have your your lead here's on the bottom so okay. your pin so we will and go through just and gonna do, go through do and that do that to, to all of them yes not not the funnest part of the build but no necessary. but it's one of those parts that we have to do so I'd like to know in the chat room, if anybody is a building this live tonight with us, or have you already got some stuff prepped up to ready to go? I do know that I saw a post on Facebook last week with, from Just Finding Our Way, and he had already set up some of his drills, or his the box ready to go for this build. And I just saw that he posted as well in the chat room that when he did this uh, he used a one inch ho round hole and cut the tabs off the square buttons with an oscillating saw so that's from just finding our way did that 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 box looks absolutely awesome i uh, really love that and it just that's just amazing and uh, good job just finding our way who is also a patron of geocache talk nice so We're I appreciate him sharing those photos with us. It's it's always yes, fun I to did too. see what people come up with on these builds. Right. I mean, and, and if, when you, if you do these builds, share them to us. Send us an email, and you can do send us that email at the geocache uh, talk uh, gadget talk podcast at gmail dot com. You can send it to the geocache talk podcast at gmail dot com, and we'll probably get it too. It's all to the same network, but. It's Gadget Talk Podcast uh, at gmail.com. And we'd love to see the pictures of your builds. Um, I'd, I'd even love to follow the caches that you put out that are from these builds. It's, it's, it's just a lot of fun seeing the logs of those. Yeah. In fact, I've been, I follow all the ones that have been sent to me, and uh, several of them have been getting logged recently. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, and now I. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. And say I didn't see when you were posting that. Did you post the what the final was on there? Are you going to wait on that for the just finding our ways? Bill? Um, yeah, he's I, I just finding your way. Uh, which one are you talking about on the the one he's building tonight? Are you yeah, that tonight? one that that one that we have. I didn't know if you shared it or was waiting until later. I think yeah, I don't. I haven't shared it. Okay. So, yeah, I put I've. Putting those things together was always kind of a very interesting putting those together. Yeah, it's not the fastest thing, but it's ne necessary <laughs> to do. Now, I do want to mention, too, that this was sent to me, actually, this puzzle. Uh, the idea of it was sent to me by uh, DJW House, by Dave Wagner. So um, appreciate that from him. It always helps to uh, to get ideas on builds. So. Oh yeah, yeah. If anybody and, has any ideas, let us know. Even if it's something you you know you want to see built and you can't figure it out, maybe it's something that we can can figure out and show everybody. Yeah, I mean, it, 
DJW House has some great bills, and I just got actually got a package from him today on something that we're going to be try, I'm going to be trying out, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, really looking forward to it and getting some feedback on there um, how this is going to come together. But it's another gadget smart cash build that he's helped put together. Yeah, yeah, he's good with those. In fact, I'm, I'm hoping that if everything turns out right, we actually will be building it on the show. Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, so make sure we have nine here. I should. So, and I see, uh, let's see here. Kenny, that's great. You're, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Kenny says, still learning builds. My hides still consist of camo, duct tape, and earthly stuff super glued to it. Hey, you're in the right place. Uh, these are some really fun and simple builds that just about anybody can do. And the good thing is with it being here on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching is that you can always go back and stop it and watch it and, re and rewatch it several times. I've done that many times on my builds as I've built some stuff from here as well. Yeah. And, you know, we all have to start somewhere and duct tape and, you know, works great. Oh, yeah. Um, anything. You know, people just want to get out and find caches and that's great. Um, okay. So next what we need to do now that we have all those switches on is... Uh, we have to install the light bulb. Now, you don't have to install the light bulb if you're not planning on making it light up. I okay. was trying to find uh, switches that didn't light up that came in a bigger pack, uh, and that was one color, but it was almost impossible when I was looking on Amazon uh, to get them. So these light up. So you have the option, but you don't have to use it. Now, do these um, just light up white, or do these light up different colors? These are just white, but you could change the resistor in the LED, and you could actually have it change colors on the LED. But, um, you know, the other reason, actually, why I did go with these ones, too, is when you get the plain um, switches that don't that just have one color, you can't remove the top and put a symbol or number underneath it, depending on where your puzzle is going to go. Um, so it would just be solid and you'd have to put like a label on top. And I like being able to hide it underneath. I think it looks a lot better. Right. Yeah, it does. Plus it, it doesn't wear off as easy too, as well. It makes it a little right. more weatherproof. So these LEDs I'm just sticking in. Now, if you're hooking up the LEDs, which are these two outer, uh, tabs here. Okay. If the light doesn't come on, then you have to, you could switch those or turn the LED around. Yeah, if you're so, soldering, you have your negative be and your positive, your yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you have your negative and your and your positive, or uh, your your uh, cathode and everything is switched, right? So right. Well, that's good to uh, know because anyway. yeah, if you're soldering and you solder that together, it's just so much easier just to flip the LED around than versus unsoldering it and resoldering. Yeah. So yeah, much yeah. better. And again, you don't have to use the lights if you're not making one light up, which is not we're not really showing that tonight on this build. Which we could incorporate in a future build if we want to. Uh, as yes. long, and same with a switch if we want to, or a latch. Right. That that sounds like, or yeah, there's so many things that we can add to this. And that's one thing that we've started doing on the this program is using each gadget is kind of be, can be a starting point to lead to another gadget. Yes. Okay. So now that we have these completely put together, um the full mechanism here so this is actually the switch that they'll be pushing on when they okay. actually activate the switch and that we can show how that works is this here if you can see the side of it there yes. um, it actually has a couple ears inside here or tabs that you push it down in and you turn it and it will snap into place Right. I had a couple then, of mine that were a little hard to get together, like right there. But. They might be. And then honestly, if you're actually pushing on the button, then it's really hard to get in. Um, yeah, that does make sense. And maybe I was doing that when I was doing it. I've done it several times. And I was like, why is this so hard? And then I realized I was pushing <laughs> on the button. Or I had, or I had my buttons pushed uh, on the build already facing down, and it was pushing on it without me knowing. Ah, so, yeah. Or realizing it. So you can see that little button there actually is pushed by that white lever. And okay. that's how, actually that's the only thing that activates is on that one side that activates actually the the switch. So that's great. Or the button. So just finding um, our way says please do more electric latches. 
Okay. <laughs> I like electric latches. They're just not always easy or something that everybody could do. So we're right. trying to keep this into something that everybody can do at this point, and then we will move on. So, um, which may be happening soon. Um, so then after that, what we need to do is we need to drill our holes in a piece of plastic, a piece of wood. So you can do a birdhouse, you can do, you know, whatever you want, whatever you're thinking about. We didn't provide uh, any kind of container or suggest a container. Um, this is mainly just about showing you how to build a puzzle and then you can incorporate it into any of your builds. Sorry, you can watch no, them my hands. Um, <laughs> you can incorporate it in any build that you want to uh, in the future. So right. uh, you could do a birdhouse and have these right on the front, you know, have a door maybe that opens it so hides it. Um, it's completely up to you. Um, and so what we're going to do here is let me grab a piece of plastic and we'll do the layout real quick. All right. So, yeah, and Dave was saying uh, latches are cool and a bit challenging. Yeah, they are. I mean, there's it's just all part of it. And, uh, of course, this idea came partially from DJW House. And uh, thanks, Dave, for bringing that to us on this. I uh, really love caches, and I got to get up there to be able to find your caches. I'm closer, but I got to get up there to get them. Yeah, they're great. I... You know, I think I've mentioned it before. Last summer, my family, when I went up there for a few days and found a lot of his caches, and they're amazing. Some of the best yeah. I've ever found. Yeah. Definitely worth the trip. Yes, it is. So what we need to do now is on the build list, there's a one-inch uh, drill bit. And the only thing I have is I have a drill press and a Forstner bit that's one inch. But you can use anything you want as long as it's one inch uh, on there. So... Let's do the layout real quick. And the layout that I found works best is my ruler here. Is I think center is every two inches. Now, if you're putting this on a birdhouse or something, something smaller in an ammo can, you can go right. a little bit smaller. Um, these ones here are less, I think, inch and a half, an inch and three quarters, so not that much smaller. But I'm going two inches is what I found. And so also one of the reasons why is when you have it underneath, when these are underneath there, you have all these pins you have to work with. And so when you got wires sticking out of them, they're too close to each other to actually get the wires and them to work with. So I went a little bit further apart on mine. So let's go ahead and go two inches on this. And again, you can, everybody can do it however they want. Uh, we're just going to make this real fast. So, every two inches, and then I like everything to be square or oh, even. Yeah. So, we have our two inch layout here. If you can see that, if that camera's good or not, I'm just gonna make a line. Jeez, that's off. Hard to see that side of the <laughs> that side of the line. Close enough for this show. I, I'm actually not going to end up cutting this one, but just to show. So we got our, our two inches here between lines. Okay. And then now we need to get our two inches this way. So we could just right. use this. Use this same thing. And just marking those every two inches. Every two inches. Through. And then using a square, you could use a speed square, anything you want. Um, or you could just use rulers and figure it out. Yeah. Pull it up to you. So where these lines cross, obviously, is where our holes are going to be. And I've actually considered for this build tonight bringing my drill press inside here. I have a little tabletop one. thought about bringing in and actually drilling it out, but... Yeah, I, I couldn't do, bring mine inside. Mine's in the garage, and it's attached to my shopsmith. There's no way well, I'm taking that thing upstairs. The shopsmiths are a little big to, to bring yeah. inside. Those are yeah, great machines. Are. <laughs> I looked at buying one years and years ago, but... Um, well, I absolutely okay. love my shopsmith. I keep finding some new parts. In fact, uh, where I work, they have a uh, a thrift store and a... Newer one than what I had came in and had the tables on it. And I ended up getting the tables 
off of the their shop smith which was a lot nicer tables or bigger tables so i've mm-hmm. kind of upgraded mine so yeah it, it's i love the shop smith yeah um and i when i was looking at it, i already have so many tools woodworking tools it's one of those <laughs> things so then you take these and you drill your one inch holes right in the middle of each of these okay hole here um which we did right here hey there you go it's already done all right it's actually a piece of plastic i just took the 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 paper cover off of it so um so um now we have our our nine holes um and we can actually start setting our buttons in here so you'll take your button here and i actually am going to use so on these you can either it's a little bit longer than one inch there's a little lip in here okay on this um that's a little bit bigger than one inch um so what you could do is use this little washer deal here it kind of gives it a little more depth too that you put on there and then that fits the one inch otherwise it kind of sticks up a tiny bit without the correct hole that's there oh yeah that's great so hard to hard to see that camera yeah but anyway we'll just use those you can decide on your build what you want to do so we'll stick that in with the washer on the back or the nut And I just snug it up a little bit because we're going to end up moving them a tiny bit. I'm going to try and get these all facing the same direction. Okay. But we may need to adjust it. And then what you may want to do as well is, since these are round, which is nice, you can actually angle them or do whatever you need to do when you're putting them together. Um, you can actually actually offset them at, uh, was that a 180 degrees or something? Okay. Maybe 90 degrees. And would that make it easier when you actually do the wiring or which ways? And now we're going to yeah, get the wiring. Yeah, it could. Shortly. Yeah. Yeah. It could make it easier when you're doing the wiring. Um, so Eric because... just said, uh, just popped in quick, which I could uh, be watching live. I already have a location and a cash page set up, uh, set aside for this build. That's awesome. That's Cannot great. And Eric see... is... Sorry, go ahead. I cannot wait to see all the different. Uh, builds that come from this and re- once again if you do build this and you put it out we'd love to see the caches so send us an email to gadget talk podcast at gmail.com yes please do and so eric is is one that actually has placed a couple caches from our builds out there that i follow so he does a great job with them oh that's awesome so this is what i'm talking about so when you have them all lined up the same way you could actually turn 190 degrees um which may make it easier um, but since these are round buttons, not the square ones, you can actually go however you want to get the buttons on there. So um, we're going to just go one way for now and just snug them up. Okay. I'll take those back out. Yeah. Eric has one in a library right now, and I think it's had some. I don't know if it was muggled, but I know his review. Right, since I followed the cache, has been you need to needs maintenance or archive it or something. But it's in a library; yeah. that it's not open. Yeah, Direwolf was just saying, "Hey, don't put it in a library." <laughs> a library caches are great. Unfortunately, I think it's get muggled. All right, so. Kenny has a question. How long have you guys been building caches like this? Um, this is, for me, personally, this will be one of the first ones of a nine button for me when I build this. Um, so this will be my first one, but I've been building gadgets for probably about uh, about four years now. Different ones started off in South Carolina, and now I'm in Memphis building them here. And so, Chad, how long have you been building gadgets? Um. I'd say about four years. I started caching in 2015. Okay. But they weren't, my original ones were not gadget caches. Um, they were just, you know, basic, you know, lamp skirts and whatever it was to kind of get into it. Right. And then um, as I was putting them out, I was, you know, looking at ways to make them better. Uh, and so then I started looking at gadget, you know, making gadget caches and everything. So I would say, Four, four years or so. So about the same time as you. Okay. 
Yeah, I remember. Of course, you always remember your first gadget that you build. So. Yeah. My first one is. Where is it? Mine's in a drawer down here, I think. <laughs> Mine's been um, taken apart and put in different caches that I've put out. Yeah, hey, recycle it. Yep, it's all, all just about all my caches. If once I archive them, they end up being recycled into something else. Yeah, I do that a lot, or improve them so they change a tiny bit here and there. Right. Um, you know, and and something that we were just talking about before the show is I'm working on actually. I've been thinking about archiving all my caches and just <laughs> put new ones in their places and republishing them. So, so Oldie Olson says, "OMG, Bounce Bounce put out an LPC." <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Yeah, it was one of my first ones. Um, it's still out there technically. I had <laughs> um, when people started finding my caches, um, and my name got a little bit bigger, not very big, but got bigger. Uh, people were like, they were finding the lamp skirt or lamp post caches, right? And they're like, "Wow, not what I expected from Bounce Bounce." So then I was like, "Oh man!" Oh no! So I ended up having my wife adopt them. <laughs> but, you know, I've also put them out just to, as placeholders, um, you know, at one point, just to hold the spot right. so don't take them. But now you can, as long as you, you go in there and you start to uh, um, make it in the cache or you have an area in there, it actually will hold it, right? It'll right. Placehold it from the reviewer so they know that someone else wants it. So if someone else tries to publish or something there, it won't, they'll say something to them or let them know. Yeah. Um, but, Yeah. So Dire Wolf says you probably built your own lamp post. <laughs> no, you know, I have a lamp post cache that I've been working on and off on that will be a great cache. It might be one of the highest favorited lamp post caches. So it will be different than a regular one, but it will be underneath the light skirt. Oh, that's cool. So um, okay, so now we have all our buttons in place. All right. So now we need to go ahead and install the switches. Okay. So like I said, you have a little tab here and you can see on the side of the the button there where the tab actually goes up and then turns right, sideways you, get, you got the grooves that are going there. right exactly make sure you're not pushing on the button because if you're trying if you're trying to push on the button and put it in the button gets in the way yeah so make sure you're not pushing on it um oh i want to go down and this is where you're going to find out well that i have actually put them all in the wrong way but that's okay let's see what happens the nice thing about them being around you is you can turn them. Right, that is great. So we're just going to install all of them. And the puzzle for this cache, when you're coming up with one, um, it's completely up to you. Um, I'm using, which I will show here at the end, a Sudoku puzzle. Right. And um, that I think will be kind of fun. And so the puzzle itself will be on the cache. I haven't decided if I'm going to have the cache page or if I'll provide some inside the cache itself. Um, so we'll see what I do with that. But it'll probably be on the cache page and they can look it up or print it. I also have a, a big cache that's three foot by three foot. So I thought on the back of the door put either paint with the dry erase marker stuff or put a dry erase marker board on there. And okay. then I vinyl in the squares and the numbers, and they could just finish it right there on site. Uh, the only problem with that is I'm nervous about cashers just leaving the puzzle completed. Right. So. Yeah, definitely like how it automatically can reset. Yeah. Yeah. So if we just have, if I have it on the cash page and they can print it out um, from the cash page and, and complete the puzzle that way, that would be the best way to do it. So. Right. It's a little loose. I don't like how that's fitting. Let's switch that out. So, Thomas said, I know a guy who printed his uh, lamppost cache and the lamppost and the parking lot and the 3D printers are cool. That's nice. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of printing. You printed a light post and a parking lot? Yeah, that would be actually probably... Now, Tom, answer in the chat. Did that go in like into the woods? So he go, hey, it's an LPC, and they have to go out into the woods and find it. Now that would be funny. Yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> Three. So I do funny. know. Yeah, I do know that. Like, um, 
So I've, I follow a lot of just finding our way. Last few of his that he's put out and they're getting gadgets are actually attached to lamp posts. So, and they're at businesses. So that, there's another way that you could do a lamp post cache. That's not a lamp post cache. Just make sure you get permission. You don't want your cash blown up. No. Or taken by a property manager. No, you don't. No, we've seen some caches blown up before. Yeah. Okay, so next we need to add some LEDs. So depending on what you're doing, if this is hooked to a latch, you don't have to have LEDs if you don't want to, as long as it's activating the latch. Okay. Um, you you can do the numbers. Well, I don't know how you do the numbers. Something you make one LED light up. What we're going to do is add the four LEDs for a combination. You can do three or however many you want. We're just okay. going to add the four LEDs. So if you have it right, those LEDs light up, and that's the lock combination on it. So... I just need to those I didn't pre-drill, so I have to drill it now. And I probably should have thought about doing it before I did the buttons, but a little late now. So we're just gonna stick them right up here. And you do any layout you want. Okay. I'm just gonna go every half inch. What's that? Six. Six and a half. Yeah, just finding our way of saying this is, uh, this one is intended for a lamp post as well. Uh, they seem to last much longer than hanging on a tree in the desert. Yeah. So, and of course, it's all depends on where you're at. Um, oh, <laughs> um, Audie Olson said, I almost had a cache that was placed with permission blown up because the Arduino board. Looks scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, all location, location, location. Yeah. And, and you know, typically the property manager owners get notifications, but I guess depending on what it looks like, they the police may decide just to blow it up. Yeah. Uh, just label it really well. Most police departments, law enforcement, they or fire departments, they know what geocaching is now. And so if they see the logo on there or the name, they... Hopefully, it wouldn't bother it. I would hope so. I'd hope they wouldn't. So we're going to go ahead and strip down our LEDs here. Remember, if you're if you're doing this, these have a soldered end, so um, you may want to cut them off first before you do it, so it doesn't rip the end off. Yeah, and I think very soon here. I may have said this a few times on some shows. We're gonna start. We're gonna go over soldering, so we can actually start tinning our wires. Tinning those. Yes, because it makes a big difference. It does. It it really does. I mean, I tinned some wires this last week, and it was so much nicer. Yeah, they work better, and it's the right way to do it. And I actually feel bad sometimes when we're doing these builds, and I'm just wire nutting stuff together, especially right. this small wire. Now, the other thing we need to put on our tool list is your uh, your wire strippers there. Oh, they're on the... Are they on there now? on the website. Yeah, they've been on there for a while. Oh. Um, it's probably a good thing I haven't seen them. I would have bought, already bought them. <laughs> they're nice. I like them better than having those old school, which I have lots of those wires, especially on the smaller stuff. Um, right. These are nice because you can actually set your length of your cut you want to do in there. And so when it just hits it, you know that's the length you want, right? And it's adjustable. Oh, that's sweet. So, and then you can adjust the grip, how much it bites down on the thing. And then it also has the crimpers back here, which I have a different tool right. for crimping here. That's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, th those are on there. Um, and if they're not, make sure someone sends us a message and we can get them on there. But I know I put them on there a while ago. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to go and check and add it to my wish list on Amazon. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill these holes out. And what size bit are you using for that? Um, this is uh, five millimeter. Where did my bit stuff go? It's amazing what happens with my stuff. Huh.
Interesting. Okay. Um, so it's a it's for the five millimeter, which I believe is the three sixteenths size. Okay. On Sorry, I didn't mean so. to put you on the spot on that. No, no, that's okay. I, <laughs> you saw it right before the show. I was just oh, here it is. It's right behind me. Okay. Yeah. No, I was seeing it. It was okay. on the table. Yeah. So I use these all the time. Um, I don't know if it will focus without the light on, but. Um, Maybe not. Anyways, it has a size on it. Um, and so all I do is put my LED through it to make sure what size it is. And then I get the drill bit that fits through it or, fits you know, that. what drill bit size it is. Now, do we have one of those on our build page as well as tools? If, I do not think I do. If, okay, the other so thing we need to get I like, that added. Yeah, we need to add yeah. one of those to it too. The other one I like here is this is the thread size also for a, a bolt. Or, oh, yeah. Uh, so you can actually know what the thread type is. So if it's a 24th or 32nd, and then also the size, right? So you can thread it in there. So I use these all the time too, and we can get that put on there as well. Okay, that'd be great. Just some little little tips and tricks that help us when we're doing stuff. Yeah, it's little things like that end up making things a lot less complicated. So let me just go ahead and... Now, as you're doing this, you do have some space in there if we just saw, so you're not drilling right into your nice table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually, this here is a, a big rubber mat, a work surface mat. So if I did drill into it, it's not the end of the world. But yes. Right. Yeah, if you have a nice, if you're doing this on your kitchen table, put something between the kitchen table and the <laughs> material. And then don't put your fingers underneath it. No, no. I mean, I guess it's better to get pierced by a, a screw gun than cutting your finger off from a saw. So, yeah, yeah. of course, Man. you're cutting into red plastic right now, so you wouldn't be able to tell if you nicked yourself or not. So, <laughs> I'll try not to. No, I just busted that. That's why you don't push on plastic. Probably should have a backer for it. Yeah, so yeah, you just gotta let's let the drill work itself. You saw right before I did this too. Uh, it was literally like what twenty minutes before we went live. I actually right. went and cut this this on the CNC machine real quick. Yeah, so oh, I thought well, about Joyce to have a drill. CNC machine. Yeah, I had a drill. I was thinking oh, I'll bring the drill press in, and I thought well, I'll use the the uh, the big one inch uh, Forstner bit. And do and do it on there, and I thought, you know what? I'll just real quick, and so I designed it real fast and cut it, which makes it nice. So, of course, your design real quick would have taken any of us, most oh, people, a lot longer. I once you get to learn a program, it's actually not too bad. Oh yeah, I think anybody can do it. I'm not very tech savvy, so and I could do it. So I think most people can. I think that's up for debate if you're tech savvy or not. Yeah. There. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, so. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Look at I cracked this thing all the way. You probably can't see it. Probably shouldn't have to say anything when you notice. Um, so this looks really, really bad, but that's just, just a demo. Uh, I'll just put the LEDs in there, and then um, we will glue, hot glue them in place. There, which is I'm going to have to heat up here. We'll move on to one other thing here before we get to that. So, all right. Usually so I have a photo before we go. We're talking about LPCs mm -hmm. a little bit ago. And Dave, uh, DW House, sent me a photo real quick. And there is an LPC gadget cache placed by permission with permission. So, so hey. That so, one I yeah. have found. So you outside, found that one. I think that's outside of Goodwill or something. And up going towards... Uh, Wisconsin, I think it is. It may even be in Wisconsin. I'm not sure. I think it was the closest one to the Vader cache. He has a dark Vader one. Okay. So Tom Tom has a question. Can you use a hot air gun and scrap plastic uh, and fix that hole? He says it works on kayaks. Uh, I think kayaks are a different type of plastic. I'm not sure what they are. Um, I've not used it, but I can use what is a acrylic weld and I could actually squirt it in there out of a syringe and that would be solid again that crack would be you'd still see the crack now as far as using a hot gun and fixing that it wouldn't work 
Uh-huh. But the the uh, acry- the glue I have. I'll just show real quick. Not to get sidetracked too quick, but you can use a syringe with a needle, which I use a lot of times. But on uh, acrylic, there's a acry- acrylic cement that I use, and then I sque- put it into a bottle that has a needle on it. And then if you squeeze that right in there, it would be as solid as the piece of acrylic if it wasn't cracked. So it actually okay. melts. This this uh, chemical here is a fast set, setting solvent. And so it actually melts the plastic together. So if you had okay. two pieces, you could melt them together. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what are we going to do? Okay, wires. So now the fun part is cutting wires. So as you can tell... We're gonna need lots of wires for this, so um, yes, you're gonna need your positive and your negative wire, right? And then right. there's two per, so we'll need one to here, right? So I'm thinking eleven of each. Okay. Wire. So the ones on the ends uh, are gonna need to be a little bit bigger, longer than the the ones in the middle. So we're gonna do nine. If I'm counting right, nine of the smaller ones. So I'm just going to estimate my length on that. Let me grab my ruler. And you can do this any way you want. Um, I actually thought about making something to feed it through and cut it. But um, let's do this. won't take that long. So let's say I think five inches is going to be way too long. There'll be lots of – got to think about room in the back, right? Correct. Of your dash. So I, I think four inches would be plenty. Okay. So. And the easiest thing, once you get that first one cut, just start folding yeah. it over and just keep just going use through it. it. I've seen someone make an Arduino one where you actually just type in the length you want. And you put the wire in it, and it has a wheel that moves the wire, and then it cuts it. It's actually pretty cool. That is really cool. Now, they don't I have to be... That... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, they don't have to be perfectly even. You can see these are off an eighth of an inch or so. Um, we're just doing an about. Yeah, I was, I'm wondering if that the wire cutter Arduino was just for bragging rights or if that was just somebody just really being really bored when they came up with that one. <laughs> he might have had a project where he cut a ton of wire. If I was doing this every day, that would oh, be nice. That's very true, very true. So um, we actually, my son and I, my wife makes a lot of stuff. for. She does a lot of runs. And so she does these, I don't know, tutus that they make. And um, she's always she buys the tutu material in the long rolls, and we're always cutting it. So we actually came up with a real machine that hooks to uh, a paper cutter, and so we actually just pull it through and cut it, and pull it through and cut it, uh, and it actually works really well. Changed the speed of everything. Yeah, it's amazing when you're having to do something over and over and over again. You you start looking for ways to how you can speed this speed the process up, and that's just yeah. That's I've heard I mean. it said, if you want to find the most effective way of doing something, find the laziest person and have them do it. I'm, we're, but we're not lazy. We're just trying to figure out the most effective way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Dave was talking about that cash that you were showing on light skirt. That's in West Bend. That's like, I couldn't think of that name. Okay. Um, I want to say Westport every time I think about it. Cause that's a town we have <laughs> around here, but I know that's not right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great cash. All of his caches are, and they're probably all too difficult for me. Well, I've been, of course, Mingo, hopefully coming up. Uh, he's got a gadget cache that's out, going to be out there that I'm looking forward to getting. It'll be like one of my first, actually, DJW houses caches to get. So I'm looking forward to getting to do that. And, and like I said, he just sent me a package. So I guess once I put this one together i can say hey i just solved a dj w house cash too so right yeah i'm excited for that i haven't checked my mail to see if it's come 
but I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I was excited to see that come in today. That's definitely going to be a future build. Yeah. Okay, so now that we have all of our wires here, um, this is where the crimper comes in a lot handier than than uh, the other ones. Because that just crimps it so fast. Ugh. I'm going to adjust my length, though. There's one that actually pulls from the side here that's a better crimper than this one, but they're like okay. $80, and I'm not. Adam Savage, if you ever watch Adam Savage uh, there on TV, he has one on there, and it's they're nice. Yeah, I, I really been getting into getting on a lot of different tools more recently and those are really nice and a lot of people have had comments in in the chat tonight as you've been using them oh nice yeah unfortunately if people make comments i can't really see them Derek keeps me updated on them so if i don't <laughs> mention them, don't be offended i busy working on the build Yep, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to watch that and feed it, feed it to you, and let you work and do your magic. Yeah. So, so is, uh, is Chad stripping those wires? Anybody in the chat, uh, let us know what you're thinking of this build and uh, how soon do you think you might be actually building this to get this one out? So just let us know. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, and if they, you know, I'd like to know too what they would like to see in the future on some of the future builds. Right. Um, yeah, that, because we we're talking about that before we went live tonight too. Some people want to get into the Arduino stuff fairly quickly. Some people want to stick with the basic, you know, things. And I think, uh, you know, we're going to try and do a little bit of both of them. But uh, it'd be nice to know what people are thinking. Right. So if you, uh, any ideas? Uh, send it to gadget talk podcast at gmail.com. Let us know. And because we would really love to see what you would like else to see. Because I mean, we can come up with stuff, but it's a lot more fun if it's something that you guys want to come up with. So we'd love to hear from you guys and just see what you want. Um, RG just asked if I could strip a few wires at the same time. You can, but I find that it doesn't always work. Here, let's try a couple. So that, that did too. No problem. Um, okay. But I've noticed in the past I've tried that because I get impatient. I'm like, oh, how can I speed this up? And I will end up <laughs> either stripping just one or not stripping either one. Look at that. It's working. All right, I'm let's complaining. see if we can do three. Let's try three. I did it. I did three. If only 10 and three at a time. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, no. I only have one wire left. Now we're down to one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. Should have brought my vacuum over here. Okay. So now that we have that done, we're going to put ends on them. Now, typically, like we've mentioned before, we would tin the wires first before we'd end up crimping them. But since we haven't gone over soldering and tinning, we're just going to go ahead and crimp them on there. Um, but if you know how to do that, it would be a good good thing to do if you have the yeah, capability. It's, and it's real easy, and it only takes just a few seconds to do it. Yeah. Um, oh, here we go. So I'm using, I called out for a different type of connector. Um, it's the same connector, I should say, but it looks a little bit different. Okay. Um, it looks like this here. So it doesn't have the protective cover on it like this one does. Um, and the only reason why I'm using this one here is actually because what I'll show you at the end, I built one of these yesterday and I used up all my connectors. <laughs> and the only thing that they had at Home Depot were these other ones. So, And Home but, Depot is not a sponsor. Yeah. 
um, but these are tap these are a better better connector because they actually nothing will touch it right the, the, the sides are closed so right. something can actually touch it so it's not going to short it out as easy right exactly so the way this is going to work and i wonder if i should have stripped them a little bit longer uh since i didn't tin them uh we'll find out here we're going to want to twist two of them together because we're going to be jumping from one to another to another okay so we're going to twist two together and then you're going to put your connector on there And then we're going to go ahead and crimp it. And that's it. It's all crimped together, ready to go. All right. Hopefully it has a good connection. Might in the few on the, if you're doing it at home, you may want to crimp. You may want to pull a little bit more wire off of them just to make sure you're getting a good connection. Okay. Um, I might just do it along the way as we build it. Just to hate to build this and find at the end I didn't have a great connection on one. Um, yeah, so same true. thing. We're gonna go ahead and put the, twist them together. Put the nut on. And keep going. Oh geez, it's almost seven already. Wow. Yeah, we just hey, time flies when we're having fun. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a little bit longer of a build. Maybe I should have uh, pre-built some of this. And but, so basically, oh well. you're just daisy chaining those wires together as you're going along. Exactly, and that's exactly what we're doing. I don't know if is anybody even is, is anybody building this live as we're going along. Yeah, I haven't seen any chats, anybody in the chat that, um, but I do have a image for anybody that wants to see the actual wiring diagram for this. Um, yes. There's the wiring diagram for the pro for this build tonight. So if you can understand that, uh, great. I mean, when I saw it at first, I didn't understand it. So don't feel bad if you don't, but that's the wiring diagram. And that's actually on the back of mine and Chad's shirts um that we have on the gadget talk shirts and you can find those at the geocache talk uh, shop you go to geocache talk.com you can go in, into the shop and there are our shirts that you can actually order there and if you buy a shirt that actually helps out the channel helps out the network and so we really appreciate it and we're getting a lot more shirts up there from gadget talk geocache talk geocaching with kids so there are a lot of different uh, products that they're up there on that on there yeah yeah we appreciate it if you can go on there and, and buy something as well as vinyl and they also will um if you have a travel bug that you want for your car they can custom make it um especially if you've got a new car maybe and um you know the old one end up not being able to you know it was garbage probably it couldn't come off the window they can duplicate it for you oh, that's great So if we were tinning this, how would this be different than what we're doing right now? You'd still just twist it together, or would you tin yeah, both I would uh, twist pieces it together. together? I'd twist it together and then tin it. Um, it's probably, you know, everybody would probably have a different way they'd like to do it. But I'd twist together and then tin it, and then it gives you a nice solid piece of wire, almost like it was a solid strand of wire instead of braided. Um, okay. And so it actually would crimp better. Look at that. We're halfway done with the red. With this first one. <laughs> then you got to do this for th with the next one. Yeah. So I did That's see a, a comment earlier, and I'm going to pull it up real quick. Um, it was from Direwolf. He says, I, I pretty much had zero luck crimping the connectors to the LEDs. Um, I had to end up using electrical tape to keep them in place. Now, my question was is for Direwolf. Was it during this part of it, or was it actually connecting the LEDs? Because I know the wires on the LEDs are super, super thin, and they are hard to crimp. And that's where the tinning uh, actually will help with that as well. 
Yes. I'm thinking from there it's from the LEDs, and those wires are super, super thin. You really, really need to tin them um, yeah. before you put them on. Yeah, and the Caching Dead uh, New York says uh, tinning is very easy. Been doing that since he was a kid. Yeah. Right, and Dire Wolf said the wires would just pull right out, right back out. Yeah, it's because it's so thin, it was really hard, and that's where, like I said, the tinning really helps with that. Yeah, you know what? Maybe that's something we'll cover really, really soon then, just because, I mean, if people are having problems, I don't I don't want to build something that people are going to have problems with. Right, and Hugh just yeah. asked, what is, what is tinning? I don't know. I don't know what this is. What tinning is, is where you take your wire... And you'll end up using flux is the, really the best way. It, and what flux does is actually when you take your solder to the wire itself, the flux will actually suck that solder into the wire to make it uh, put, put all those little individual wires into one piece. Uh, so tinning actually helps with that. And then when you're actually soldering and you need that wire to stick to a connection, you can really just heat up that solder that's already on that wire and it will make that connection. So that's, that's what tinning is. Um, I hope that makes sense. And so we'll be, um, doing that. Um, so here's, here's a, here's a tip for you, Dire Wolf from DJ mixing a solid wire LED with a stranded wire, uh, won't work well without tinning. So yeah, we, we got, we really do got to get into doing some tinning and just kind of showing the proper way of tinning. Yeah, we'll put up on the um up on our up on our uh parts list maybe a uh a decent uh soldering gun. Right. Um, and I just got a brand expensive. new one. Yeah, mine yeah. I, the one I just got was like I think like $45. Um and it was really nice and it heats up to melting temp in like 6 seconds. So it's That's it's nice. really good. Had it came with a whole bunch of um, different tips. Came with some helping hands on it and a, a spool of solder and a spool holder so that you can just have right there on it as well. So um, yeah, we'll get that up there as a, on our tools list as well. Yeah, and the one that I have, one of the ones I use actually a lot is one that was twenty dollars. Um, works fine. I mean. You know, there are differences between the more expensive ones and the cheaper ones, but they, in, in the long run, they ultimately should all work the same. It just takes longer to heat up. Um, some may come with more tips, uh, but you got to tin your tip too when you get your solder gun, right? As well, right? So it's kind of like seasoning your uh, cast iron skillets. You got to season yeah. it. Yeah. But we're getting there. After this, it actually should go fairly quick. Yeah, because then it just just about becomes a plug and play at this, yeah. at this point. We should have did some TV magic and had one already done. <laughs> but we're not on TV. We're on yeah. podcast. That part of the fun is building it live with people. Um, although I don't know how many is building this live. But yeah, I'm not sure. If you are building live, let let us know. Or when you plan on doing this build, I know I'll probably plan on personally doing this build here probably within the next month or so. Yeah, me too. Oh, no, you're already doing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing about this is I really like the different options you can do for puzzles and caches. On it. Right, and there's so many different things you can add even to this. I mean... Um, now on this one, are you adding the the solenoid door, or are you are we just doing the the for like a lock? It's on this one. I'm just going to do for like a lock, um, but we can cover the the solenoid door too. Um, you know, Dave, I know mentioned earlier there, and it's something that we've talked about with having like the lights light up and the and the locks on there is you know battery life, how much power it uses, but. If you have, if you're not lighting them up, it's pretty much just a momentary switch. So the only time it's transferring power or using power is when the buttons are the correct buttons are pushed. Um, so your the m amount of of battery usage is minimal, so it would actually last a long time. Um, 
But if you want the lights to light up, you need to have an on-off switch. And I would typically do a momentary on-off switch because I want it to be able to shut off automatically when you take your finger off of it. Right. But um, on this, because everything's momentary, I don't know if that would, you'd have to hold that button and push the other ones, or I don't know if you make, because you want the lights to light up. Um, yeah, it'd be easier if it didn't light up, I guess. I put a switch on the one that lights up for mine that also has a latch, and I'll show you at the end. Um, okay. And I'm just, you know, honestly, it's not going out in the wild, um, but I just count on people to hopefully shut it off at the end. Right. Yeah, because it's always easier if the cache automatically resets itself because invariably finders will forget to um, to reset it. Yes. Okay, so we have our two strands here. So these buttons here, or but latches here, have... Let's see if I can pop it off. So we can actually read it. <laughs> okay, so you have a normally open, normally closed. So the normally closes at the top, normally opens at the bottom, because this is the way it'd be sitting okay. when you're looking at it, right? Okay. And then on the very top here um, is where things are. Everything's written this way. That's weird. Um, so this is where your power would be coming in, and then you would be switching it here and here. So when you go into the first one, you need to go into the top piece here, right? So you're feeding the power to it. Okay. And then from here is when you need to start to, to do what your puzzle is. In fact, we're not going to go there. That's for our, our battery. Um, we need to decide. You have to decide on what puzzle you want. So what buttons you have to push at the same time to make the puzzle work. And okay. then that would be, uh, that would determine if you want to be on normally open, normally closed. So we're just going to randomize it here for us. And... So all the power goes into the top, and then it comes out yes, through the bottom, thanks. correct? Yes. So, so this needs to go in here. Think of it as a waterfall. Power top out to the bottom is what yeah. I've always heard. And you know what I should have did was done all these individually. No, I think about it. I know why I did this daisy chain is when I did it for the lights, because the lights just have to be on. Because you don't ah. need to have this wire between here and here, right? You just need to have a... A double okay. end. Um, in fact, that won't work because that will be feeding it all the time. Right, that's going to short circuit it. Look at that. Terrible. <laughs> I think I would have built one of these before I actually came on and did it. So I'm going to make like this. This will go into here. A bad idea. <laughs> DJW House says it looks like a string of Christmas lights. Yeah, that was a huge mistake because you know what I was just thinking about too is I didn't have to do, I was thinking of lights when I did this. Ah, yeah. Because you only, you don't need your, you're just completing the positive. You don't need to have. All this. That's why we're running long. I didn't probably sit and think about it, right? Well, I guess you could use the black. I mean, we got the black for the next part of it. Yeah. For... yeah so, hey, you before use... you, when you come back through, hold it there so you can kind of see. Because from the top view, it's hard to see what you're actually doing. Oh. Can you hold it up to the side? There you go. Yep. So you're going from. You're going in to a switch. Our power will be in here, right? So our power from our battery to complete the circuit. And then this goes from here to the in here. And then it goes out from here to the in and then out to the in. And then we'll go out and then we'll just keep daisy chaining it all the way to that. Okay. All 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, part of building caches is, and I've said this on my channel before, it's not necessarily when you're a cache builder, you don't get the opportunity to get to find it, but you get the opportunity trying to figure out how to work it. <laughs> yeah. So, and then letting everybody figure it out and making mistakes and hey, we're all learning and a lot of it, I mean, I used to had a cache that was almost burned up on me all the time and it was because I was short circuiting just like what we did, what was going to happen here. So, and it's just a lot of times we just have a brain fart and we just don't yeah. remember it at the time. <laughs> I was thinking about the lights because that was the last thing I did last night. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many nights I've lost sleep just trying to think of the next <laughs> gadget I'm going to build. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, almost there. Good thing is, is we had to use the black anyways. Yeah. So, what's going on is the, your plug, it comes into the top, then the power comes out from the bottom back into the top of the next one, out of the bottom Correct. to the top, and that's how it comes out. So, so if it's the, normally open, that button will have to be pushed, and if it's normally closed, then it's already pushed. So if someone pushes that button, it actually opens it, so then it can't, the power will stop. Right, it won't complete the circuit. So right yeah. now, the way I have it wired is, I think um, the correct way is just to have the center button pushed. But you can do any puzzle you want for it. Right. So Chad, we're in good company. DJW House says I've had many dope moments myself. Yeah. So we're okay. We're good. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> you know, again, not to bring it up because we're not sponsored by him or anything, but Adam Savage, if you ever watch his builds, he messes up all the time. It's amazing. And he leaves it in his cuts, right? Right. But that's all part of learning and thinking and doing it all. But, you know, oh, well. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and add our LED and our battery to this. So I'm just going to go ahead, since we're running so late, just run one LED in here. Okay. To light it up so we know we completed a circuit. Okay. Okay. The old I'm trusty just gonna hot, hot glue, glue gun. gun it in there. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of other ways to do it, but I'm just using the hot glue gun. And then these are the really, really thin wires that we we're talking about that need to be tinned first. Yes. I mean, wire nuts are even hard with those a lot of times too, because they are so thin. And then when you have to cut them to size, the I know my cutters or when I try to separate, it's so thin and a lot of times it breaks off the wires there too. Yeah. Okay. So we could technically on this one, this is the nine volt battery holder. You can use, you know, depending on what you have, four double A's, whatever. I'm using nine volt just because it will make the light light up a little bit better. Uh, or if the buttons right. were, but we're just using nine volt. I think we use nine volt for most things on here so just gonna go ahead and crimp hopefully without tinning this just i have the wire cut really really long and i'm folding it over to try and get a little bit thicker may work right may not we'll see find out here soon and then that will go in here so that's your power in so all okay. we're doing is completing the positive and the negative will go automatically to the light now, just to double check myself here, I believe the negative is red on this thing. Yeah, on those yep. with the with the resistor already built into it, it's backwards. Mm -hmm. the The red wire, because you're using a red LED, uh, at least it's all that it is on mine, which means whatever color the LED the wire is, this is the color of the LED, and then the black is the Positive? Is that right? Yes. Is that no. that's, yes, that's, that's how all mine are. Yeah. So, so it, it's opposite of what you would think. Twist that up and then put a small wire nut on it. And 
And then now this is our positive. We have to end up connecting with our very end run. Now we could have ran it so it actually could have went this way and ended here. So it would have been closer. So if I was smarter, I would have done that. But we will just, we have wire. We have the technology to extend it. Yep. But also with these connections, you could really easily change it up if you had to as well. Yeah, so you could change it up any way you want. I mean, I just don't want to go through and do it and change everything. Yeah, no, I completely uh, understand. Here. So we will just go ahead and wire nut it. And then this side obviously needs to get connector. And I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and sticking with us through this build as we've been putting this together. Well, I say we, but I mean Chad. <laughs> it's um, us. You're doing the <laughs> you're doing the entertaining. I'm just I'm building. And as people probably found out last week, I'm not very great at entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got to hook the battery up. I was like, oh, it's not working. Yeah, yeah, it's getting late. <laughs> no, it's almost past some of our bedtimes. times. <laughs> Make sure I wired this correctly. Get it right backwards. I don't have enough fingers if I went backwards. Yep, there I went backwards. It's so like I do all the outside ones instead of just oh, the center. Okay. So, anyways, that works. So you could do numbers in here if you wanted to, and they had to figure out the numbers to get the light to light up, and they'd know that that would be the correct code. You could do different LEDs to get the correct code um, on this. So that's pretty much it right there. Now, the nice thing is you can push as many buttons as you want on here, and nothing will light up. You have to push the correct ones because, like we were mentioning, well, if it's closed and you push the button, it opens it up. Right. So it won't complete the circuit. So. so if there's another puzzle that you could do without having, you have to complete the circuit, don't even have a thing on the page, but your hint could be you have to push four buttons. Yeah. And they have to figure out what four they have to hit, hold, for it to activate a solenoid or something like that. And that would be a way that you might be able to modify this as well. Yeah, and I don't know. One reason why I know Dave was mentioning he used nine buttons is because of the combination. There's so many different combinations you have to come up with to, to just guess it. Right. So, uh, yeah, I guess you you could do it that way. It'd be fun. I know some that did it with the the momentary on off on buttons that we did a couple weeks ago or last month. Right. Um, they right. did that with an LED, and you had to push them the right way, the correct way to get them, and it was just a guess, right? So, but. We'll show here real quick. So this is what we did here. This is how we built it. So again, you got your power going into the top. Get it going okay. here. Um, and then out into the top and then out from normally, normally close. You just need to decide what one you want to do and then in and then out and just work your daisy chain your way around. Uh, I would probably do it differently and have it end out over here. But again, that's up to you, however you want to do it. And it's only using the pa battery power when you actually activate the light uh, on okay. it. So it shouldn't take too much power. The battery should last a long time on here. And and then, you know, if you went back to the one we did about, about power in caches, internally powered caches, uh, you would learn that some AA batteries are actually a lot better than 9 volts and will last a lot longer. So you can use those. But we can show here what I came up with for the puzzle. And this is just something I came up with. You can do whatever you want. So this is what I built. Let me just go ahead and move the camera up here okay. a little bit. Um, this is what I built. This is just an ammo, a plastic ammo can um, that's bigger. Um, and you had the square buttons in this one, not the round. Yes, I did the square in this because I had them, and I actually like the look of them. And it's easy for me to cut square holes on a CNC machine. So, yeah, that's it's, what I did. it's really hard for me to cut square holes with a drill bit. So, yes, so. it is. <laughs> so, um, 
what we end up coming with up with if you want to go ahead and show the Sudoku puzzle. So this would be okay. on the cash page, the puzzle itself. Get it pulled up here. So on here, you need to figure out this box that's highlighted in red, and you'd have to push whatever numbers are certain numbers in that, which would be on the cash page. So the cash page would say push seven, eight, nine, or three or something like that all at the same time um, to actually get the box to open. Um, if you, you wouldn't even have to, if you didn't want to call out a certain square and they would have to complete the complete puzzle, the whole puzzle, and they'd have to try those numbers in each box before they knew which one would open it. So let's go ahead and pull up our final, our answer. So our answer on this one here would be you'd have to push nine, seven, eight, and four. So, you know, if you go back here to the, the box, the Sudoku puzzle had nine squares. So, you know, you'd have to look at the puzzle and know where the nine, seven, eight, and three were on here, if I remember right, uh, and push those. So, on this one, I have them actually light up. So, we'll turn it on. Um, and then, since there's nothing in here now, you can do also, you know, pictures or whatever you want. It's up to you, depending on your puzzle is. But on here, if you push the correct numbers, so... Depending on which one it was, you know, you could push them, nothing would happen. You have to push the correct numbers. And once you did, this opens up and you're good to go. You have you have the logbook. So pretty simple. You'd push those numbers, the nine, seven, three, and eight, I think it was. Push it, opens up, and you can log it. So really fun cache to do. There's lots of different options, but that's what I end up deciding to to make out of them. Yeah, and that's just really cool. I love I love that. Um, just seeing how you, there's so many different options that you can do with this. And I really like that even though we've come, you've come up with this or DJ W house sent us the kind of how to do this. And there's so many different things like we did it with an led tonight. Then you had, you had it with the latch there. Um, you can, and then you can maybe, I mean, it's unlimited, almost unlimited, what you could figure out how to do. All you have to do is to be able to get power to it and wire it up. Yeah, you can have a hook to an Arduino with a, a LCD disc, uh, display, right? And it'd pop up a combination on it. Um, you know, you can make it a travel bug where it would pop up a, a trackable number. Um, you know, whatever whatever you want to do. Uh, it's unlimited. You know, we're just, again, thanks to Dave about this. I'm not going to take any credit on this puzzle. Um, he gave this to us to build and, you know, we're showing you the basics and then, you know, you can do whatever you want, uh, and expand it from there. Yeah. So I it, just it's love really it. good. It's, just, it's really cool. I really like, it. I can't wait to build. I can't, and I can't wait to see all the other builders, what they come up with and the puzzles and anything. So that's just going to be yeah. really neat. I, I think and on, I'd love to if hear you had, sorry, I think if you had one on a birdhouse, um, where a door open, then you had those buttons in there. I think that would look really cool. Now, I yeah, so we too. can. I mean, I'll probably build that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fun. Well, like I need to houses. do a birdhouse someday. So, um, but if, you, but would love to hear from you guys. Uh, you can email us at gadgettalkpodcast at gmail dot com, and we'd love to see your builds that you do with this. I uh, really would really like to see those. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and so did I don't know if you showed that image of the final one for the just finding our way. Oh no. All right. So here's So what he ended up doing is he ended up using the square buttons as well, which look great. He ended up putting a image on the button on there. And so I'm not sure what his puzzle is gonna be, and I'm sure it's secret. So whoever's gonna find it. Well it's different cache types. Yeah, yeah, that's Those what I see. It's, it's in, different cache types. So I don't know what that puzzle is gonna be. I mean you could do a Sudoku with those those logos on it. Right. Um, right. But I don't know what this puzzle is going to be, but it's going to be really, really fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it ends up coming out as and, and people's comments. So, right. Um, but that's, that's just that's finding our cool way down in Mesa, Arizona. Whose cash that one is that this concept as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. So perfect. That's, that's um, cool. Next week um, we are, looking at a couple different options for our show, but uh, for the next month build, maybe what we'll end up doing here is maybe looking at tuning some wires and getting okay. into a little bit other things before we do another build. So we can kind of expand uh, our, our build options. Right. Cause I do know a lot of people want to get into, to some, some soldering and some, 
uh, Arduino stuff. Right. And like we said before, if you want to see what different types of caches or have ideas of a caches, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you guys. So we'd love to see that and give us some ideas of what, what you want to see. Yes, please do. Um, and from there, I think, uh, I think we've ran long enough tonight. So um, All right. if you have any last words, I think we're good to go. So no, I just think this is a lot of fun. Um, I, I, like I said, I can't wait to actually start building this myself, and I will probably put it in a birdhouse because I just build a lot of birdhouses. Um, but this is really cool. So, but I would love to encourage everybody uh, follow follow us on Instagram, um, Facebook, all those different locations, and also tell your other fellow cashers about Gadget Talk. So that's just we'd really love to see more people and getting more of these caches out there. Yes, and follow us on Instagram if you kind of want to see. Uh, we're posting stuff as we build it. Uh, we're coming up with ideas at um, Gadget Talk Podcast on the oh, Instagram. Or you can go to Bounce Bounce 8, which is mine. Um, there's a lot of things on there, but uh, we also have a Gadget Talk uh, Instagram as well. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching tonight. Right. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye.